Welcome back to Big Boys Boxing. So, I read the news this morning. Dillian White has been reinstated by the WBC as interim champion and mandatory challenger. Now, I think the wording's wrong in that. He hasn't been reinstated. He's been given a new position as mandatory and interim champion. Because if he was reinstated, it would be on the same deal as it was before. He would get his mandatory shot in May this year. But they're still keeping Tyson Fury as the mandatory and pushing Dillian White's shot out to 2021. Excuse me while I play. You know, I ain't one of these Dillian White nut huggers. Prior to fighting Oscar Rivas, for me, Dillian White had only himself to blame for not obtaining the mandatory position earlier. As it was, Dominic Brazil was the mando when it started out. He had the opportunity to fight Dominic Brazil for that position. Dominic Brazil wanted $5 million and Dillian White said he's pricing himself out and went off and did something else. His choice. Also, he was offered to fight for the second mandatory position against Luis Ortiz, which effectively would have been the position he fought for against Oscar Rivas anyway, but he chose not to do that as well. So, until then, I don't believe Dillian White had been treated harshly. He was chasing money fights instead. But the WBC still pushing Dillian White out to 2021 for me is wrong. Tyson Fury shouldn't be the mandatory. He hasn't fought a final eliminator. He hasn't even pay, paid WBC sanctioning fees. But it has emerged that Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder are gonna have two more fights. The February fight, and then another one after that. And Dylan White being mandatory in May interferes with that. And to cover up the fact that Deontay Wilder hasn't faced mandatories every 12 months in his reign as champion, they'll just throw Tyson Fury in there as mandatory and think nobody's gonna kick up a stink about it. So they can get the sanctioning fees from Wilder vs Fury 2 and Wilder vs Fury 3 before Dillian White gets a shot at the title he earned. Now also I'll leave some links in the description for a couple of statements. The UCAD statement for starters, which talks about Uh, the talks about the sample that had the adverse findings in it was contaminated. Therefore, Dillian White didn't even ingest the drugs. Right? But the statement the WBC have come out with, with their, their independent investigation, does not mention that the sample was contaminated. They just say that Dillian White didn't knowingly or intentionally ingest anything to enhance his performance. They don't mention that it's likely he didn't ingest in anything at all, whether it was knowingly or intentionally or not. If he didn't ingest anything, he didn't ingest anything, did he? The lab fucked up. The sample sample got contaminated. 
in the story. And there's no apology from the WBC in their statement. Recognizing that they acted, they handed out a suspension based on a reporter leaking private information. In which case, if Thomas Hauser hadn't have obtained information from an illegal source, the WBC wouldn't have heard a goddamn word about it, and neither would we. It would have been dealt with internally, and rightly so, if the sample was contaminated. Because Dillian White's reputation has been tarnished due to the WBC acting on a reporter's leak of private information. So for me, this is more bullshit from the WBC. And what are we now? We're the 12th of December. Not long to go until the boycott starts. Spread the word. These motherfuckers have got to pay for their actions. Hashtag WBC boycott 2020. Get on board. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give me the thumbs up if you have. Subscribe to the channel. And leave some comments down below. Tell me what you think. I'm out. Sue! So